Hello, God bless you. Hope you're having a great day. Sorry this video is late. We had a lot of trouble trying to get this video out. I believe it's due to the subject matter. But we are going to be in 1 John chapter 1 verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Like I said, I believe the subject matter was not, was, you know, met with, I was fought against to bring this out. And I think part of the problem is what happened in John's day. In John's day, people had the wrong idea about Jesus. So John, in writing this letter, wanted to correct these wrong ideas. And what we addressed here is still a problem today. One of the wrong ideas is that people believe that Jesus was not flesh and blood human. They think he was just a spirit. John taught clearly that Jesus, the Son of God, came as a real man. Jesus lived his life here on this earth as a man. And Jesus actually died a man this man Jesus Christ rose again from the dead also some people thought and they taught that Jesus was just merely a man that he wasn't really God some say the Spirit of God came on him at his baptism others believe that the Spirit of God left him just before he endured the cross believing that God cannot die but John shows that Jesus is one with God. I mean, we see that in John's gospel. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. The Word became flesh, and we beheld his, his glory. That's meaning that Jesus is God, and he came to this earth. Isaiah 7.14 says that, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. It means that God came to this earth. And it says they beheld his glory. Here it says they handled him. It means they touched him. They leaned on him. They hugged him. They kissed him. After his resurrection, we see in John chapter 21 that Thomas put his finger in the prince of the nails. Jesus is Christ who gave his life for us. No mere man could take away our sins as the Lord Jesus Christ has done. Because if Jesus wasn't God, then the person who died on that cross, their sacrifice means nothing. Which means your grandma, your grandpa, your mama, your daddy, your child could die for you, for your sins. But because Jesus is God, his sacrifice on the cross is powerful enough to pay for your sin, my sin, all of our sins. Sins from people who believed in his day all the way to today and all the way till Jesus comes back. John in, these, in this verse proves his eyewitness status. He shows that what he speaks, he witnessed personally. He proclaims that from the beginning he had first-hand knowledge. John is not writing based on someone else's knowledge of what they told him. He is stating things that he knows to be fact. John was aware that Jesus is the word of God, which created all things, which was, this phrase refers to the proclamation of the gospel and centers in the person of Christ, the words of Christ, and the works of Christ. From the beginning in John's gospel means eternity past, but this phrase used in context here in these verses refers to the beginning of the gospel preaching. When the readers first heard about Jesus, the phrase also emphasizes the stability of the gospel message. Its contents do not change, but remain stable from the very beginning. It is not subject to change due to worldly current fads. We have heard, we have seen, we have looked upon, our hands have handled. These words point 
to the vivid recollection of the person of Jesus. That John still, even at his old age, because it's believed that he wrote this letter 60 years after Jesus rose from the dead. But these memories are permanently etched in his mind as if they had just happened. John was there when Jesus spoke to the evil spirits and they came out of the people. John saw the miracle of those who were being raised from the dead and the sick being healed. John was there when Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount. John was there when Jesus walked on water. The authority of his personal experience as an eyewitness of Jesus' life refutes the false teachers who boastfully and arrogantly and wrongfully taught about Jesus, never seeing him and not even knowing him. The word of life is Jesus. The word of life also means the message of the gospel. John wrote about Jesus, the Lord. He wrote about the life of, that Jesus gives. This life comes from those, it's for those who believe the word produces life. This is about the good news of Jesus Christ, who is the life. The word that is the Lord Jesus always existed. He was alive before time and the world began. Jesus and the must in Jesus and the message of life came from God. This was God's purpose from creation. The Lord Jesus came into the world to achieve this purpose. John and the disciples with him knew the Lord Jesus. They had heard what Jesus said. They listened to what Jesus had taught. They were with Jesus. They actually saw him. They saw what he did. They lived with him. For three and a half years, they knew that Jesus was a real human. Some people deny that God really came as a human, but he did. John gives his real experience of Jesus. Jesus crossed Christ with them here on this earth. You know, like I said, a lot of people, they don't believe that. They think that that's a myth. And I believe that's why we've had... The troubles today because people want to doubt who Jesus is they want to uh, doubt the saving knowledge of Jesus in this world today people don't want Jesus they don't care to have Jesus in their life they don't understand that this world there's more to this world there's more after this world we're all going to live forever one day, either in peace or in torment. And Jesus is the way to, the, to get this peace. But to doubt that he was a real man, to doubt that he was really God, these take away from who he is. They make him not who he was. You know, people like to doubt that he was really born of a virgin. Just these different things, these facts about Jesus. Some people doubt that he was really perfect and sinless. Doubting any of this will make him just a mortal man, just like us. But the fact that all this that we read was true about him. He truly was God in the flesh. He truly existed before the world began. He truly became a flesh and blood human. He truly lived on this earth, living a perfect, sinless life, never messing up. He was truly God when he came to this earth, when he lived on this earth, when he died. To take away any of that is to take away who he is and what he did. And if he is not who he says he was, then we're dead in our sins. We're still we're in trouble. Everyone for 2,000 years is in trouble because nobody's saved. But it's the fact that Jesus was who he says he was. Everything that this Bible says is true. And when we give the gospel at the end of this video, every video here, you have to have the understanding that this is true. And those who know Jesus intellectually, just they don't think that this is true. They know who he is and what he's done. But they don't believe that he a, was a real person. They don't believe he's really God. You have to come to that understanding before you can come to Jesus. To have that personal relationship with him. But when you don't talk to him, when you don't pray to him, when you don't get to know him, 
then these things seem doubtful to you. But everything in this Bible is true. And I want to introduce you to Jesus in case you don't, if you're doubting any of this. The gospel in a nutshell is that because of the fall from Genesis chapter 3, sin entered the world. Sin created all that separated all of us from God. And Romans 3.23 confirms that saying that all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. And Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. Meaning that because of our sin, not one of us is worthy to go to heaven. But as we see in John 3.16, God loves you so much that Jesus came, left heaven, became flesh and blood. But you have to believe that. John 3.16 will not work for, for you if you don't believe in who Jesus was. You have to believe that God loved you so much that he sent his son, his only begotten son, that whoever will believe in him will have eternal life. You have to believe every part of that. 2 Corinthians 5.21 tells us that Jesus lived a perfect sinless life. And Jesus became sin for us to pay for our sins, which means when we believe what Jesus did on the cross, that Jesus... Jesus put on our sin, and when we believe the gospel message, then we put on Jesus' righteousness. The gospel message is that from 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day, according to the scriptures. Romans 10, 9 tells us, if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. Like I said, you have to believe that this really happened. You see, righteousness means being right with God, being perfect. Ain't one of us are perfect. That's why we have to put on Jesus' righteousness. And so when Jesus, when God looks at us, he sees Jesus' right. Sees, he sees Jesus. Jesus' righteousness is what it reflects back to God. We can't do it good enough. As we say at the End of John 3, 16, whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. That's believing every aspect. The virgin birth, the fact that he was a man, flesh and blood, the fact that he was God, the fact that he did live a perfect sinless life and died for your sins. You have to believe every, every part of that, and then you'll have eternal life. Jesus is the only way to heaven. That's what John 14, 6 says. That's Jesus talking, saying that he is the only way to heaven. Jesus' blood bought our ticket. Jesus' blood covered our sins, past, present, and future. Jesus' blood broke down the wall that separates us from God. But if you doubt that he was really God, if you doubt that he was really a flesh and blood human, then that blood doesn't work for you. 1 John 1 9 says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But we have to sincerely surrender our life to Jesus, meaning that we're not just saying words. We're to try to please somebody or get a get out of hell free card. We really believe in what Jesus did for us on the cross, and we truly want to live for him. Then we'll be saved. This is Jesus' free gift, and all you have to do is accept it. You can't earn your way to heaven. Can't be a good enough person, can't do enough good deeds. We can't be righteous. We have to put on his righteousness by believing what he did. And when you stand before God, it will not matter how much you've given to charity or that you think that you're a good person, that you never robbed anyone or killed anything. Our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. Ephesians 2, 9 and 8 and 9 says, It's by grace that we are saved through faith, not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, which means we can't earn it. We don't deserve it, but God loves us enough that he made a way. But like I said, this verse is showing us that in order to accept that God made a way for us, we have to accept what what who Jesus was, what he did. And John in this verse is giving us a eyewitness, first-hand eyewitness account. It's not a he said, she said. John didn't hear this from his his best friend's third cousin removed aunt, you know, whatever crazy long life scenario. John walked with Jesus. 
This was first-hand knowledge to him. He understood it. He's telling you that he's seen Jesus with his own eyes. He didn't hear about him in a, from somebody else talking. He's seen him with his own eyes. He touched him. He hugged him. He kissed him. He had a face-to-face, eye-to-eye, nose-to-nose encounter with Jesus. And we always follow the gospel with a warning of Jesus' is in return because right now you can personally know Jesus for one day soon and how soon we don't know. But complete hell on earth will come. We see it coming. The world's getting darker by the minute. The Bible pricks and I want you to introduce you to Jesus. I want you to know him personally before all hell breaks loose. Because right now before the tribulation starts, we're under the age of grace. We that right now is the easy way out. To come to Jesus, all you have to do is Sincerely believe what Jesus did for you on the cross and surrender your life to him. Accept Jesus' free gift, that free ticket into heaven. But after the tribulation begins, the age of grace will be over. And that'll be the hard way. And you have to do more than just believe in Jesus. You have to die for Jesus. But I love you and I don't want that for you. So right now, before the age of grace is over, please turn to Jesus today. You see, the people who are going to go through the tribulation, who are going to accept Jesus, in the tribulation period, or don't want to be those who right now doubt that Jesus was really a human. They really doubt that he was really God. And they will be left in this tribulation to face the terrifying supernatural events that will happen each day getting progressively worse, worse than your worst nightmare, worse than any horror movie you've ever seen. These people are going to experience this. There's going to be a lot of people who come to save knowledge of Jesus in the tribulation. Too many to count, the Bible says. It's going to be beautiful. But I don't want you to have to witness all this to realize that you need Jesus. To realize who he really was. To believe what who he was. You know, many have differing opinions on the rapture. We're not here to argue about the timing or the reality. These theologies here don't matter. We want you to turn to Jesus today because... The Bible's clear. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed our next breath. And even if we are here to see some of the hell that's coming, who knows how long we'll be able to survive. But know that one day millions will disappear along with all the children around the world. And when you hear that all these have vanished, know that no matter what may be said, because based on what we're seeing, they may use aliens to explain away what happened. But know that if you don't see me or hear my voice, if these videos are not uploaded, if all the children around the world are gone along with millions of others, know that Jesus took us home in the rapture. And if you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him today while you still have the time. Today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. You know, don't wait till you're financially secure. Don't wait till you get to a point in time in your life. Today is the day of salvation. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed our next breath. In the description box, we have a link to the ABCs of salvation and a simple prayer. This is just a template of how to be saved. It's like bullet points of what to say. The words do not matter. What matters is a sincere cry, a sincere to prayer to God, seeking Him to save you. I pray you got something on the video, but don't take my word for it. Read the Bible for yourself. Pray to God. No one has the answers that you're looking for. Only God does, and you only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. Don't just take a verse at face value. Read the verses before and after. Finish the chapter. Just pick a random verse or listen to someone read or preach the Bible. You're not getting a full picture. You're just getting just a little bit. The kingdom has scratched the surface. Read and discover the stories for yourself. It's so very important to read the Bible for yourself. The Bible will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, and struggle. In the description box, we have several sources to help you to read the Bible. If you don't have a physical book, and if you don't believe in Jesus today, just talk to him. Tell him you don't believe him and tell him to prove himself to you. But be open to accept his answer. Because we're getting down to the wire. The tribulation is cast in such a big shadow that we can hardly see the light around it. And you do not want to be here for what's coming. All that the Bible said is true. It's all coming to pass. A lot of it already has. There's still some to come. But it will. You want to be on the winning side. You want to choose Jesus. You don't want to doubt who he was. You don't want to doubt what he did. Because just ask him to prove it to you.
Life separated from Jesus is not going to be fun. There's no orgies and rock concerts and stuff in, in hell. It's suffering and torture and torment forever. So ask Jesus to prove himself to you today. But be open to accept his answer. And if you need prayer, let us know in the comment section. Write us an email. Leave us a message on Discord. We want to stand in agreement with you in whatever need you may have. Or if you have a praise report, same thing. We want to rejoice with you and what Jesus has done. Comment, email us, leave a message on Discord. We want to worship Jesus with you. We want to stand in agreement with your prayers. I pray you got something out of the video today. I pray that you're encouraged that you know who Jesus is and what he did for you. And if you don't, I pray that you can seriously consider. And if you got a point in the time of this video and you don't know him, please consider doing it today because we're running out of time. I love you. Jesus loves you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Or God willing, we'll see you in the clouds. Come, Lord Jesus, we're so ready.